Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to a video that I've been really planning on making for some time and that is, you know, the most disturbing book I ever read. I definitely got this idea from Ollie over at Criminali who made a video uh, with the exact same title. I have a feeling our books are, are somewhat uh, different because he reads about crime horror, that kind of thing. Uh, and I don't read as much of that stuff as he does, but I have read some disturbing books in my day. And for a while, you know, after I saw Ollie's video and the title, I thought, well, the most disturbing book I've ever read is 2666 by Roberto Bolaño, which is disturbing. But the more I thought about it, the more and the more I thought about what, you know, disturbs me uh, about a book, the more I realized the most disturbing book I've ever read was At Night All Blood is Black uh, by David Yap. This book won, uh, I believe, the Booker International Award uh, in 2021, I think, and I read it shortly after that, and I thought the book was just great. There are a number of things about the book which make it appeal to me. <laughs> One, it's short. Uh, two, it is from uh, a an author from a place I normally don't read books from. The author is Senegalese. Uh, and two, it deals with World War I, which, you know, was one of my major areas of interest uh, as kind of a person who's really interested in history. So there are all those things going for it. And, you know, I went into it, I, I went into reading it, having known that it was a kind of disturbing book, but I don't think I had a really good idea of how disturbing it was or all the ways in which it would disturb me. So I'm going to start off by just reading to you what the cover flap says about the book. Now, keep in mind, this book's only 145 pages long. It's a really short book, and listen to all the information you get from the cover flap. Alpha Nindaye is a Senegalese man who finds himself fighting as a so-called Chocolat soldier uh, with the French army during World War I. When his village friend, Madimba Diop, is mortally wounded in battle, Madimba begs Alpha to kill him and spare him the pain of a long death in no man's land. But Alpha can't bring himself to strike down a man who is like a brother to him, and Madimba dies in agony. Faced with what he comes to see as his own cowardice and cruelty, Alpha begins to lose touch with reality. Anxious to avenge the death of his friend and find forgive forgiveness for himself, he adopts a macabre nocturnal ritual. He sneaks across enemy lines every night to find and kill a blue-eyed German soldier, and every night he returns uh, to base unharmed with his victim's severed hand. At first, Alpha's comrades admire his ingenuity, but rumors soon circulate that, a super so that this super soldier isn't a hero, but a sorcerer, a devourer of souls. Plans are hatched to get Alpha away from the front and separate him from his growing collection of hands before his apparent psychosis affects morale. But how does one reason with the demon, and how far will Alpha go to make amends to his dead friend? So that's a lot of information for you to get about the plot of a relatively short book. And the th I think that is an indication, or that is kind of a clue to why the book disturbs me so much, because I don't think the book is nearly as straightforward as that makes it out to be. So let's talk about the book here really quickly, and things about the book that are disturbing. The most obvious thing about the book that's disturbing, which you probably picked up on from listening to me read that cover flap, is that there's a lot of graphic violence. When when the book talks about uh, Alpha being there when his friend Mademba is dying, uh, you need to know that he dies uh, over a long period of time in incredible pain, and the description of that is incredibly disturbing uh, and graphic. Uh, when he says that uh, Alpha follows this ritual where he goes out and he kills a blue-eyed German soldier every night and then severs his hand, the process by which he does that is described um, in graphic detail. Other elements of the fighting in World War I are described in graphic detail, as you might expect. But to me, what is most disturbing about the book isn't just that, but what happens in the second half of the book. So the first half of the book is pretty much all taken up with this description of Alpha and his reaction and the things that he does after Mademba is killed. Um, you know, and how he goes about this and how his uh, fellow soldiers look at him and how he, you know, describes, you know, what his job was and what other soldiers do and how other soldiers react to him and then this whole plan to get him away from the front. But the second half of the book is all, you know, a description of Alpha's time, you know, clearly with some kind of uh, medical facility where soldiers who are experiencing some kind of mental problem as a result of the war uh, are sent. He's clearly there, and his time and his reflection on his life before the war and his friendship with Mademba uh, before the war, and then the things he does while he's there. So they're really these two halves of the book. 
And one of the things that, that I've thought about a lot with is how the two halves relate. What is Diop telling us uh, about the first half of the book with the second half of the book? So it's that second half of the book which really, I think, brings home to me what is really disturbing about the book. And what's disturbing about the book to me, in addition to the violence and the sexual violence, which is also described in the book, what's disturbing about the book to me is not knowing, you know, if what Alpha is telling us about what happened is true. So you need to know that Alpha is the narrator of this story. We see what the events of the story happen through Alpha's eyes, and we see his reaction. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, he is an unreliable narrator. What he says is not, I think, to be taken at face value. And I don't think that you can put your trust that he's telling the truth in any page. One of the things I think that Diop does, which emphasizes this, is that he has Alpha say God's truth over and over again. Before he's about to tell you a story, he says God's truth, this is what happened. And he says it so often that you begin to doubt that anything he says uh, is actually true. Uh, in addition to that, the thing that kind of connects to me, the first half of the book, the part set during the fighting in the trenches in World War One, the second half of the book, is sexual violence. In the first half of the book, we get uh, Alpha describing the trenches uh, as though uh, they are, and comparing them to a, a woman's vagina, and talking about bullets and bombs as impotent seeds. In other words, kind of comparing them to semen, and then connecting uh, violence to uh, to sex in, in ways which are disturbing, increasingly disturbing as you read along. In addition to that, and I, I, I made a review of this back a long time ago, in addition to that, there's a whole lot of discussion about inside and out uh, that is reflected in violence and reflected in the sexual violence. So to me, that is uh, really disturbing. We also learn things about Alpha, which make us question whether or not he doesn't resent Mademba. Uh, questions about the relationship, the way he describes Mademba from, from before the war, the reasons he explains why Mademba goes out uh, and is killed on the day that he's killed, uh, things about Alpha's own childhood, his own background, uh, a discussion of the uh, first time that Alpha ha had sex with a woman, and then the repeating of that story. One of the things that, that I think helps create this doubt, this kind of disturbance, this unsettling nature of the book is that most of the major stories that Alpha tells us, he tells twice, at least twice, and every time he tells it, we get new details which makes us question whether or not he's been telling us the truth all along. And then in the end, there is a scene, a description of sexual violence uh, in which you know Alpha uh, essentially excuses what he's done by saying that he did it, or by at least pretending or relating as though he did this somehow to atone uh, for what had happened to Mademba, which he blames himself for. All kinds of questions arise in this. You know, is, you know, one of the big questions I have is, is the friendship between Mademba and Alpha really as Alpha tells it is? Or does Alpha resent him? Uh, and does, you know, why doesn't Alpha kill uh, Mademba? Why does he let him suffer for three days? Uh, staying there the whole time, literally holding his hand while he dies an incredibly agonizing death. It's not like Alpha's never killed anybody before at that point. Um, is Alpha, uh, and by the way, I think the name is important, is Alpha uh, a man who has been driven mad by the violence of World War I, by the expectations uh, and the stereotype that the French put on these you know, shock a lot soldiers, these, these soldiers they got from their African colonies to be extra savage. Is he broken by that? Is that what causes him to become uh, this kind of vicious killer and this committer of sexual violence? Uh, or was he already that way and the war in some ways frees him up? There's a lot of talking about sacrifices and freedom and being free from duty uh, in the story. I, I don't think I've ever read a book that was this short, that was this densely layered with potential meanings. And I've, like I said, I made a review of the book a long time ago. I made another video about am I reading wrong in which I, you know, wondered, am I trying to read too much into these things? And so, you know, I think you can see that this book, Not All Blood is Black, disturbs me. Uh, not necessarily just because of its content, but because of all the things and all the ambiguity and all the unsettled issues that I think are in the book. Anyway, there you go. There is my most disturbing book I've ever read. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.